I'm Meredith Blackwell, and I am interviewing Dr. Solomon Bartniki Garcia, a person who has been associated with the Mycological Society of America for many years and is one of our eminent distinguished mycologists. And he now lives in Ensenada, Baja California. In Baja, California. And he lives on the Sea of Cortez, no doubt, in a fancy house. No, the Sea of no? Cortez is far away, but the Pacific oh, is right the Pacific. there. We have it okay. only um, uh, three feet away. <laughs> okay. So what I want to know is where were you born? I was born in Mexico City. Oh. At a glorious time when Mexico City was at its very best. And guess what? What? We didn't realize it. Mm. Yeah, that's always the We way it didn't is. realize how good it was then. And then, then it became a monster of a city. Yeah, I've been there, but it was like 30 years ago. Yeah, no, it's still the center of culture for Mexico. I mean, yeah. that, that's was, why Mex Mexicans like to stay in Mexico City. because It was they, a wonderful city. Yeah, I loved yeah, yeah. it. It's, it's like New Yorkers, you know, they cannot get away from New York yeah. because it's the center of the universe. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I went all over Mexico City in uh, a Volkswagen mm. uh, bug, and all over Mexico, actually. Yeah, oh, good. Yeah, from uh, Zacatecas, uh, well, further um, oh, further north, Saltillo, Zacatecas, Guadalajara, yeah. Morelia. Oh, that's a real Mexico. Um, and then we went around yeah. to Puebla and Oaxaca. Unlike the, unlike the people that um, visit Mexico by going through Tijuana and yeah. <laughs> that's it. Well, we went there too, but we went all over. Yeah. It, was, it was really wonderful in those days. Yeah. So anyway, so you were born in Mexico City and you lived there for a long time? Did oh, you go I, to... I lived there. All my studies were in Mexico Yunan? City. No, 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 no. Yunan right. was the enemy. Okay, we, you were, were at the, we were at the Polytechnic. Okay. Yeah, I visited yeah. there uh, uh, a professor yes. from Poland, Rzymski? Oh, a R R yeah, Rendowski. Rendowski, huh? yeah. Rendowski, yeah. Yeah, he was, uh, he was now in, in, in biology and microbiology, we, are very, we were very strong. Mm -hmm. The university was not, was concentrating mostly on law, humanities. Right. But a, a career in science, you know, was much better at the Polytechnic. What about, um, you know, they're being a little noisy. <laughs> what about, um, was, were there other, my, were there mycologists there or, uh, or not? No, no, in fact, my mycology, uh, my introduction to mycology was by taking a course in medical mycology. I was part of the, of the courses that were, we had a five-year fixed set of courses, mm -hmm. and That's one of for them. an undergraduate degree. Yeah, for, for the yeah. undergrad. Uh, well, it was more than an under. It was a fancy undergraduate okay. because it required a, a thesis, a, a research thesis. Okay. And uh, uh, so I had mycology from a medical biologist, and uh, I had uh, my research training from Casas Campillo. Casas Campillo was a microbiologist at, Sin, at Syntex. Syntex was the place where uh, the, and, uh, the, the pill was invented. Oh, yeah. Birth control pill. Yeah, all okay. the, you know, uh, they were great in, in all the courses on uh, steroid research. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he was a microbiologist in there. Uh, as you, uh, may, maybe you know, maybe you don't. Uh, the, uh, synthesis of uh, cortisone require a, a very difficult uh, step that only rhizopus could do it. The organic chemists have a the time. fungus saved the it. The fungus saved it. Yeah, so that that was his. Yeah. So so in the in the afternoons uh, after work, he went to the school to you know to take care of a, re uh, a research lab, and we had a good good group about a dozen students mm -hmm. there. Was Guzman there? Gaston was in the same uh, institute, uh, but in a different department. But at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Yeah. See, Gaston was, was never in, interested in microbiology. <laughs> As you were. Uh, he was interested in the macro. My, yeah. Yeah. My seeds. Yeah. So, um, so I um, guess then 
then you went to so Cal well but uh, at that time in mexico there were there were no uh, doctoral programs mm -hmm. so the only solution was to go abroad and i uh, Casas Campillo had established a, a good rapport with uh, Selman Waxman. I don't know if you oh, yeah, remember. Yeah, oh, no, no. Yeah, and Selman Waxman had just, uh, you know, built the, this fabulous research center in uh, Rutgers. And uh, I was accepted there and I, mm -hmm. I spent my four years of doctoral studies there under Walter Nickerson. I don't know if you ever met Nickerson. Is he still there? Or? No, no way, he died okay, then. Okay, well, there's a man there now that has established a little museum in a room to Waxman. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, a room, a, like a, maybe a small classroom, and it's been gutted, and yeah. they have all this Waxman stuff in there. I visited a few years ago. Yeah. It was interesting. No, that didn't exist when I was there. No, yeah. no, no, it was more Waxman recent. was still alive, I just, yeah. 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 Well, this man wants to be sure that his memory is there at Rutgers. You know, I have a student at Rutgers uh, in the bot botany and plant pathology. I'm not sure what the department's yeah. called now. Yeah, so, so what did you do at Rutgers? At Rutgers, I, I did uh, my PhD work, uh, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, With walls, uh, fungal walls at that time? Well, at that time, uh, Nickerson was convinced that uh, to understand morphogenesis, you have to understand the chemistry of the cell mm -hmm. wall. So, but he assigned me a project to study dimorphism. He had heard that uh, mucors may be dimorphic. Yeah. So I went there to the uh, uh, collection of bugs in, at the institute and I got several mucor strains, and I tested it, and I, I, I discovered that uh, with the help of carbon dioxide, we could switch uh, yeah. the fungus, the mycelium, very mycelial-like fungus, to a perfectly yeast, you know? And that's Fair. a very famous lab exercise now, Yeah. Oh, to yeah. show that conversion. Yeah, we, uh, we published it as an exercise, and, mm -hmm. uh, and at, ASM years later. Yeah, so yeah that, and I think but, you just but, but, stab. You don't have to use the but, carbon but, but, dioxide. But he wanted, uh, you know, if I, since I had conquered the, the dimorphism of the uh, of the fungus, what he wanted to, to know is what had there any differences in chemical composition between the walls of those two, because that was his basic mm -hmm. uh, premise. Uh, so I had to, well, basically discover methods to isolate cell walls it wasn't it wasn't easy you know there were no there was no methodology at that time you know to break to break the tough uh, uh, the walls. cell walls yeah uh, and uh, eventually I, I was able to to make preparations of pure walls of the mycelium and pure walls of the yeast and you, you should have seen his face when I show him the, the vials with white stuff, you know, powder, purified, you know, under the microscope, they were very clean. So then, then there was uh, the chemistry, paper chromatography. That was the latest thing, no mass spectrometry, there was no, 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 no liquid chromatography. We had paper chromatography. <laughs> so that, and that was, that was very good, that was, uh, you know, uh, I, I think a, uh, a seminal paper for future studies on cell wall. And you got found big differences. Uh, we've, I found one difference in, in man and composition, mm -hmm. but that, that was not enough to explain. A, at the end, by, by studying the phytophthora and the cell walls and the life cycle of phytophthora, I found out that the wall composition is the same and the morphology changes a lot. So yeah. it, 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 it wasn't the chemistry of the wall. It, but from mucor, from mucor, it was a difference. But I, I don't Not think you big. could you could ex okay. you could explain it. No. Okay. <laughs> it's actually uh, later we discovered it, it's the way the wall is made. You see. Uh, and in the layers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When I was hired by the plant pathology department and uh, at UC Riverside, yeah. Um, one of the projects that that we had was to uh, label the cells with radioisotopes. Mm -hmm. So to look 
where exactly is the wall made in the fungus? And that, that was a, a really a very important paper because we could see that the wall in the Haifa is made at the very tip. In fact, you can uh, uh, graph the, the number of silver grains and find a, a very sharp gradient of synthesis concentrated at the very tip. Now, we didn't know why. I mean, it was, it was really a mystery. What, how could the fungus concentrate all of its uh, wall uh, synthesis at the very tip? Because there was nothing known about the inside of the fungus. It was until, you know, the electron microscopists, uh, Bracker and Girbart and, and others, you know, discovered that it was a co co um, collection of vesicles that reached the, the very tip and discharged the enzymes that make the wall. So, so that, that was a nice connection between the, the biochemistry and the electron microscopy, which was, which was the strongest uh, areas for, uh, for us in fungal physiology at that time. Yeah. Uh, combination of uh, biochemistry and electron microscopy. Then, then that changed with time, but uh, at least uh, in, in for a, a couple of decades, that was the... Yeah, because I got to do some electron microscopy before things weren't all looked yeah. at. And it was so exciting to see the inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so did you do this after your degree or some during, before, after, during? During my degree, yes, we did the electron mm -hmm. microscopy comparing the, uh, the mycelial and the, and the yeast cells. I didn't do the microscopy. We had a mm -hmm. technician. My electron microscopy was a new thing in there. Yeah. I mean, and, and and this woman wouldn't even let us touch the microscope. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just... we had a person like that at Texas. Yeah. Well, he trained us, but he was an ex-Nazi. Yeah. Uh oh. And he ran the place like that. It's very that. tough. Yeah. So, so did you get hired easily after you got this elegant study done? Well, I. I was hired, these are the th some of the things that happen by miracle or, or accident or whatever. Luck, that's our thing, luck. <laughs> it's luck, it was, a, the, once I gave a big lecture and uh, the, the subject was luck, <laughs> through, through my entire mm -hmm. life is luck. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what happened, uh, there were very few opportunities for, 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 for me, you know. Uh, and uh, at UC Riverside in the plant pathology department, they were looking, the plant pathology department was changing. They, 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 they didn't want to be all just uh, field pathologists. Mm -hmm. they, they wanted to have, uh, uh, you know, fundamental basic uh, research. Someone to look inside the fungus. Yeah. Or tell what was going so on. So they, they were looking for somebody trained in, you know, fungal physiology. At that mm -hmm. time, that was the word, fungal physiology. And uh, the search committee, this is interesting. One of the members of the search committee uh, decided to approach Rutgers. They told them, no, 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 there's nobody at Rutgers. Why? Don't bother. He said, but he said he went against the committee and wrote to Rutgers. And at that time, I was on a postdoctoral uh, fellowship. But not at Rutgers. Or were you at, at Rutgers? At Rutgers, still, yeah. You still were. So I got, uh, you know, the Professor Starkey gave me the letter and I applied. Mm -hmm. And uh, listen, I, I couldn't have had a better job than that. Riverside? Not, no, not really. It was ideal. It was a, 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 a strong plant pathology department, mm -hmm. you know, with plenty of resources. Not only that, in no time I got an NIH grant. To, uh, that's uh, and that's it, a big it, step. Uh, to the surprise of some of my plant pathology colleagues who have depended on state support all along, mm -hmm. or commodity money. Uh, so getting that, uh, getting the, those first NIH grants were decisive because the equipment is expensive and the reagents and all that. So, and um, uh, when NSF opened, uh, no, before that, uh, after uh, after a while, after a few years, I just I was doing uh, already phytophthora research. 
And I decided to, to send the uh, project on Phytophthora, and they swallowed it. <laughs> and I, I know, they, they never bothered to ask if it's a medical <laughs> pathogen or what. They, so I was supported uh, by both NIH and later NSF. Mm -hmm. So I had good support at the beginning, and it wasn't that difficult. It's not like today, yeah, you know? Yeah, it's hard today. So I, I was very lucky in that respect, you know, to have a strong start. With time, it, uh, getting support became more and more difficult, you know, it's it just the reverse. The more uh, you can show in productivity, the, <laughs> the fewer your chances of getting money. So, so you, you had joint appointments for a while, Riverside and Ensenada? No? No, 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 no. Uh, no, and, you and, just and, had two addresses. I, 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 no, I, I, I did 38 years of uh, professorship okay. at, in Riverside. And uh, in the year 2000, I migrated to, to Mexico. And, uh, and again, I, I was uh, another uh, good piece of luck. Uh, the, the funding, the NSF of Mexico, CONACYT, which was a, a, an agency to support research. When I finished my, my, my PhD, there was nobody. But in the year 2000, there was big Conacyt and uh, mm -hmm. I approached them and I said, well, I want to return to Mexico. I, I said, I, I don't want to just return to continue research. I want to return to, to set up a, a, a department to give opportunities to young researchers. Mm -hmm. That's, that was my proposal. So they, I talked them into giving me a million bucks to set up the the lab. Lab. And, uh, and that's why, uh, you know, uh, one of the purchases we made was extremely useful. That was a confocal microscope. When confocal micros microscopy was just beginning in, in the year 2000. And with, with that microscope, these uh, 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 young women that we hired, they went crazy using it. They just loved it. So they, they, they have utilized the confocal microscopy, plus doing all this, mut you know, making mutants of neurospora, most of them, so that you can label exactly the, the molecule you want with uh, fluorescent GFP. And, and they got fantastic results in that. But that's, for that, I just take indirect credit. Well, I've seen some of those pictures. They're just beautiful. No, they are, beautiful. they are. So yeah. it's a double skill, it, it, the skill of, of knowing how to use the microscope, you know? Because mm -hmm. you can still see the pub, um, publications, terrible uh, microscopy, really. Even, right. even elementary microscopy, you know, uh, light microscopy, terrible <laughs> images. But uh, they did the microscopy and they knew the fungi too, yeah. or the organisms. No, and they, they, they do the, mo the molecular because uh, mm -hmm. Mary Chell, uh, yeah. recall me, she spent three years at Oxford, you know, after mm -hmm. she graduated from, uh, from Riverside. Yeah, Mary, um, Kathy Aim, who's here from Purdue, they were there together mm -hmm. in uh, Lorna Castleberry's lab, I think. Yeah. So that... Um, Castleton. Yeah, with Castleton, they had a... So that, that, that was very, very useful, because um, I could not have taught her molecular genetics. It wasn't my field. I, uh, I was trained and brought up as a biochemist, a mm -hmm. microbiologist, and uh, I never liked genetics. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this little book by Catchicide, mm -hmm. uh, 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 Fungal Genetics. By whom? Catch a sign. No, I never used that. It was the most boring thing. I mean, they were just making crosses and uh, mm. I mean, uh, it, it, it just, it just, uh, you know, you have to have a liking for things. You have to have a liking for microscopy. You have to have a liking for biochemistry. You have to have a, 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 a liking for mathematics. That was, in, in, in my later years, I, I decided that we, we needed um, uh, to understand the, the mathematics of the growth process and that, and, and I was able to uh, 
to talk a young uh, mathematician from the mathematics department in Riverside to collaborate. Mm -hmm. And that's how we developed them, uh, a model to explain the growth of a, of a high farm. And, and that has been relatively successful model. Uh, but eh, because it's mathematical, you know, biologists have a, a, a difficult time swallowing. They, they go with it. They like genes. <laughs> Not the modern biologists. So. Yeah. That's the coming thing, or it's already come to be mathematical. Yeah, but yeah. Um, so no. uh, so over the years, you know, I, you know, I have migrated from. Uh, we were in, in, in my first years were with the microbiological society, society mm -hmm. ASM. Uh, that's how we had the interaction. We had a nice, nice group uh, of. Uh, uh, fungal physiologist and biochemist in, in the ASM. The Mycological Society was a disaster. I don't know if you remember how bad it was at the in the. That was maybe before your time. It was time. probably before my time, although when I joined up, um, there was a bunch of white guys in suits that ruled. <laughs> white guys in suits. Yeah, they wore suits to all the meetings. Yeah, Trump-like. <laughs> yeah. well. No, anyway. it, it, it was. I remember. I, I remember that one year they, they didn't even publish the journal. They were. They were so. Oh gosh, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, they, they, they were. They were disorganized. That was bad. Well, uh, it was one man, and they had to send yeah. someone from Syracuse University to rescue the journal. I heard. Yeah. No, it was. Do you know what rescued really the field were the British mycologists. The Did British they? mycologists were, you know. In my area, they were decisive in promoting uh, science, mycology, mm -hmm. uh, fungal biology, which we now call it. Really. Yeah, yeah. And that uh, we owe it to them. They were a very strong group. Mm -hmm. uh, I was invited to Britain many times uh, in my younger years when it's important, really. Yeah. Uh, so I had good interaction with the British mycologists, yeah, and they were very strong. Yeah. And uh, well, over the years, uh, we reverted back to the mycological society. You know, what happened at ASM is that the medical mycologists took over, the clinicians, and they didn't want to hear about uh, <laughs> fungal growth and morphogenesis. They wanted to, to, to hear medical yeah. stuff. Yeah. So the, 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 the interest of the society changed and we, we, we also moved. So, so we, we've been associated strongly with the mycological society uh, since the, I, I, let's say since the mid-70s, I say. Thank you. Yeah, I can remember you coming to meetings um, with the young woman, and she had all of this equipment she would bring, like a big box or something. Oh, that, no, no, that probably is a Bracker's uh, technician. Oh, yeah, I thought uh, you were involved. No? No? No. Okay, so I have a photograph of you and Bracker, and you're standing oh, back yeah, to back. Oh, yeah, back to back. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's a, we have a poster. Do you have that? Of, Oh, yes. I love that, that picture. That, that was, yeah. I think it, the, it was a poster for MSA that yeah. was never printed, but by me, you may have printed one. No, and, but it uh, said, um, "Join uh, MSA, uh, measure so, to measure, so, or something." Thank, so thank you for that. I think the you. measure of a distinguished mycologist, because <laughs> you were both distinguished <laughs> mycologists. Yeah, well, in, in those years, the, the uh, what Bracker was doing was greatly appreciated. I mean, although he was considered a terror, of, <laughs> and students uh, stayed away from his, his lab. Yeah, because he, he didn't was, have very many students. No, no. no. Uh, but um, for us, uh, you know, the association with Charles Bracker was decisive. He was, he was very good. And he ended up, sadly, really bad. Yeah. Uh, even his department at Purdue turned against him, and uh, they closed his lab. And uh, and physically, he was miserable. 
Well, yeah. I didn't know it until after he died, but there were a lot of things he did. He had an orchid collection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interested in orchids. He, he, he switched completely from mm. uh, from fungi to orchids. And that was basically to honor his wife. Because oh, that's he, right. he, 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 he was so sad. His wife was very strong, and, and we all believed that he, she was going to outlive him, really. But uh, in the end, the uh, pancreatic cancer right away. took her life very quickly. Mm -hmm. They had a pl plans to come to, to buy a house in Santa Barbara and come and retire. He, he liked Santa Barbara. Okay. And, and that, went, that went bad and then ruined the rest of his life. It's really sad. So, do you go in to work every day? Yeah, but I'm stopping. <laughs> really? You had enough? <laughs> no, I, I physically, you know, I, I would love to be connected, you know. Uh, they, they said I can keep my office and all the other mm -hmm. things, but uh, all the other little privileges. But th th there's no way I can de deliver a, an eight-hour performance. Well, but you're a good resource for yeah, the I, young I, kids. Yeah, no, I know. But, no, um, I, I, I think it's important because one of the things I did when, we, when I hired my, uh, my group of researchers, well, first of all, they were going to be independent. Uh, you know, I, mm -hmm. I made suggestions. The only condition is we want to work on fungi. This department is, is dedicated to the study of, uh, of fungi. And we're going to start with basic research. And later we will do applied research, but first we're going to do, we're going to get strong in basic research. And, uh, and Rosa Mourinho chose to do a cytoskeleton uh, with a right. microscope, and Marichelle did the chitin uh, synthesis. Uh, so each one, and uh, another one who's not here, Ernestina Castro. I, I, I connected her with uh, Stuart Brody. You know him. You yeah, know? I remember him. Yeah, Stuart Brody, uh, who has been working on, on rhythm, you know, mm -hmm. uh, circadian rhythm. So, so we did some work on circadian rhythm, but, but then she found that it was, a, it, it, it was a tough group, very competitive, you know, and yeah. you know, Jade Dunlop and company. You can't, you can't succeed when you have a, <laughs> uh, you're against strong competition. Uh, so the... Yeah, I've never had, I've never worked on things that other people were working on. It was much easier that way. More fun. No, it you is. You didn't have to speed all the time. Yeah, so. we... Uh, in, in the last uh, years, uh, almost all the entire work from the, the department has been on Neurospora, simply because of the two things. The, the facility to make mutants yeah. and the size of the cell, it, it lends itself to microscopy. Uh, you know, those guys with aspergillus and schizophilum, they, they have uh, tiny little hyphae. We have big hyphae. <laughs> well, you know, at LSU, we tried to find somebody with electron microscopy skills, and it's a very difficult thing to find these That's days. A, yeah, because you see, I bought two pieces of equipment, the confocal microscope and an electron microscope. Mm -hmm. The electron microscope, we, the people that we tried to hire turned us down. So, and it, it was very difficult to find somebody. It's still there. Robertson, Robbie Robertson yeah, has um, been very helpful to us, but we need somebody like Robertson to be in charge of the electron, uh, my, mm -hmm. do electron microscopy research, not just the, the technical part, but the research part. And, 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 and it, it, it's, it's such a needed tool. You know, confocal microscopy could take you this far, but then you start asking, well, what's behind all those colors? Yeah. What yeah. is it? You need, no. you need electron microscopy. There's nothing like transmission. Yeah, so. and, uh, <clears throat> and, and that requires a lot of skill. It does. And, and, the, and, and Robertson was well trained and... Uh, Where did he go to school? I can't remember, do you know? Georgia. Georgia, that's yeah. right, of course. No, was, uh, Georgia was, you know, in my days, uh, the groups that were strong were the ones in Georgia mm -hmm. and Purdue. Uh, at Purdue we had uh, Jim Lovett. Right. 
Uh, they're all disappearing. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I feel lonely now. Uh, yeah. At Georgia, we, uh, there was Mel Fuller. Right. I think he's still alive. He is. Mel, Mel Fuller and, uh, uh, and he had... Um, Mel walked away from mycology. He lives in Maine. Yeah. No, he was very strong. He did, he did a lot of good in that department. He had many he, students. He was a strong department of... Uh, yeah. In fact, we had meetings there, mycological meetings in Georgia, mm -hmm. in Athens. Yeah. I've been to two meetings there at least, yeah. maybe three. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Ralph Emerson was mm -hmm. ill, very ill, but they had already planned a symposium or a workshop in his honor. I remember going to that there. And a lot of male students who were electron microscopists, they knew how to time all the fungi in their life cycle because they yeah. were doing that for microscopy. So it was a really good workshop because we had everything at the perfect stage. Yeah. So. So we, so here we are. So do you have family in Ensenada or? Yeah, well, no, uh, there were six of us, you know, mm -hmm. three brothers, three sisters, and uh, we are all spread out. Only one, my younger sister is, is in Mexico City. Oh, okay. Uh, the rest are somewhere else. And I'm, I'm the only one in science. Oh. <laughs> That's like my family. I only have one no, brother. It, it, it's really... Uh, I like to emphasize the Garcia part of my name mm -hmm. because Garcia is my mother, okay? Right. And, and my... <clears throat> The, uh, the impulse that my mother gave me, it, it was decisive. <coughs> she, she had great, uh, you know, she was very ambitious and, and she transferred the ambition onto me to reach the, the sky and to love nature and all mm -hmm. that. That, that. That was very decisive uh, to have, even though she, hardly finished primary school. Anyway, she had this uh, con the conviction that you needed to have a, 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 you know, a university degree and mm -hmm. to be anybody, you know? My father's family was that way. His mother had gone maybe to eighth grade, his father to third grade. Mm -hmm. And they insisted all their kids go to college, six kids. Yeah. The, the, the good thing is that all my education was free, really. They, they, they didn't have to pay for it. Oh. And that was... When you got to grad school or earlier too? Well, even to graduate school. I, I came to the U.S. With, um, with a grant from the State Department, a one-year mm -hmm. grant. And then Nickerson supported me for the, the rest of my stay. So, anyway, and... Tuition in Mexico was it's almost non-existent. The, yeah. the education was free. Wow. And we had good teachers. Mexico had what, there was something incredible ha happening in, uh, in, the, in the 1930s. The war in Spain destroyed that country, you know? Yeah. And intellectuals were persecuted. Really, the, 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 the Franco regime was brutal. And the intellectuals ran away from the, were killed or ran away. And the Mexican president at that time decided to, to uh, you know, to send the uh, ships to France to, wow. to collect the intellectuals in all areas. So many of my uh, professors were Spanish. So we took the, the very best of an entire country and brought it to Mexico. And, and with that, you know, think of it. It's, it's, it, it, it's, uh, it's almost a renaissance, in, an intellectual renaissance for a, for a country. To, 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 to take away the, the very best of another country and mm -hmm. absorb it. How is it today? Well, today they, they are they're probably gone. 
there is only the the, the red remnants of the good deeds that they they did. Yeah. Would they still have students who have survived and come on down till now? Uh, no. Not really. They, they, you know, mo mo most of the Spaniards that came as in the exile thought they were going to go back. Yeah. That, that they would have, uh, you know, Franco would not live long. Yeah. Well, Franco lived <laughs> stayed, long. stayed in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. So they, they, they became Mexicans. They, they just sort of. But the U.S. also benefit the same, you know. Well, if Hitler had not persecuted Jews, think of all the scientists of, yeah. that uh, that benefited the, this country. You know. We wouldn't have so many bombs. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. You never know. You never know. So, any um, big mistakes you made? Doesn't sound like it. Yeah. I, I, I'll tell you one. What? Uh, one mistake, I started from the very beginning collecting literature, okay? Yeah. I had punch cards. Do you ever, do you ever? I didn't you, do you, it, you, but you, I remember. You, you, you went, you, you typed, uh, even they would type the, uh, all, all the information on the card and then punch it accordingly to yeah. subject and all that. And the punch your yeah. needle, shake it. And you would pick up all the right ones. And you spent too much time doing that. That, that, that was, well, that, um, that finally became impractical. So we <laughs> abandoned. So came, uh, but collecting reprints, you know, writing every time. And then came, remember current contents? Yeah. That's the way, you know, that miserable task of going through current contents and, uh, and identifying papers <laughs> and sending the little cards. And then most of them responded. So over the years, I collected uh, thousands and thousands of reprints. And I said, I'm on top of everybody because I will have the best collection of literature on fungal biology. <laughs> and you know who ruined me? Who? Google. Google. Because, Computers and Google. Because everybody, I, I ha, well, I have originals, okay? You may, yeah, you but, may think that that's valuable, that they're originals. Yeah. But by now, most of the literature has been uh, digitized. So you can access it uh, through Google. Well, three years ago, I retired from LSU. And so I talked to the people there that took care of the trash and all. And they brought a big recycling bin. Oh, it's huge. It's as big as those doors over there. And <clears throat> they put it out by the loading dock. And I hired two kids, all my journals, all my reprints. They went in those recycling yeah. And bye bye. Bye bye. It was sad, but I thought, no, I'm moving. I got to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. But the only mistake I made, um, Michael Taxon, and I did, I do occasionally have something in that, but it was not. Um, it's not online very well, so that was the problem. Do you well, you had enough? Yeah, but you you, you see. Uh, Collecting all those reprints, and uh, because uh, once computers became available, all that information was put in uh, all the, uh, into a computer. Yeah. So that you can access it. Otherwise, you, you, you just have uh, piles of papers. So I, I have my collection, uh, you, you know, you know the, the titles digitized, so I, I know where they are and their yeah. number. I got a numbering system, I know where they are. It was a major investment in time, but uh, in the end, it wasn't worth it. Well, but it probably was useful for a while. So I have 10 uh, uh, filing cabinets full of reprints. I didn't throw them away like you. <laughs> I had no place to put them. Well, yeah. we, we bought a shack from Sears. Oh, to... <laughs> how often do you go back there and look at them? Well, once, how in often? A, once in a while, because you do actually use them. most of the time you can get it from, uh, from through Google. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so it's, uh, <laughs> it is, well, that's, that, that I would say was a, 
a mistake. That was your only mistake. No, <laughs> no, no, only mistake. But <laughs> Little uh, mistakes. Wow. Well, that was a time-consuming mistake. Yeah. But it wasn't a mistake, because at the time you needed the literature. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it was worth it for a while. It, it is. Uh... OK, then. Well, you done for a while? You are the... You have anything else to say of importance? I have one question left to ask you. Have you decided that the oh, my seats are not fungi? No, <laughs> they are fungi, damn it. <laughs> I hope you're saying fungi with a little left. Uh, no, no they, they are, no, look. They act like fungi. They are. Yeah. I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is, uh, look at the program. There's nothing. practically nothing. I know. They have been ostracized from the society. This is a mistake. You would think the Pe plant pathologist would be studying uh, them. Yeah, well... There's phytophthora outbreaks all the time. Uh, uh, plant pathologists are confused by this. Uh, mm. They use fungicides. They're not going to use all my... Cedicides. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it, it is... Uh, it, it, it is a mistake, and, and you know, what I, what I loved was the fact that within the fungi, mm -hmm. we have two evolutionary lines, and they don't want to accept that you, you can have a kingdom with two evolutionary lines. No. Why do you have to have only one line? You can have two lines. Uh, because uh, it, 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 all the other properties, uh, you, you can look at them, and structure and behavior, uh, mm -hmm. all my seeds, some of the my seeds are exactly like that. Are there biochemical similarities, any of them, with they fungi? Are with, with differences, with nice differences, which makes it uh, uh, for interesting comparisons. Because you can see that at one point, woo, long time ago in evolution, uh, fungi developed, but separately, uh, mm -hmm. the my seeds developed. And each one solved the same problems, but with different slightly ways. different chemi mm -hmm. chemistry, slightly different. So it was like a, a, an, an, an amino acid is the one amino acid is different. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, make make the proteins with the different amino acids. That's one thing that, that is uh, that's in, make. I'm I'm saying wrong. Make make the, the same amino acid but with a different pathway. Right. And. Uh, the, this is what makes it very, very interesting. You compare also the cell walls, they're different. They're cellulosic, mm -hmm. but cellulose and chitin are they practically, the, practically the same in, yeah. in, in, in physical properties. So why did they choose cellulose? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, and besides, the omycetes evolve before the rest of the fungi. So they are the real yeah. fungi. <laughs> Okay. Uh, well, you, you know, uh, this is something I don't know why they 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 feel so um, upset about me saying that all my seeds are fungi. They find, you know, some of them. In, in, well, I think they should continue to be studied by plant pathologists more. Not and, plant pathologists, mycologists. But, you 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 yeah. you have expelled them. You know this 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 is such nonsense to have expelled the all my seeds from from this society. What do you think when there's less emphasis on taxonomy and phylogeny that maybe all my seeds will come back? They never left. It's only in the minds of some <laughs> misguided <laughs> phylogeneticists that. That they, they they put them aside. I mean, you um, uh, you know, people. Uh, you can say that there is a, a racist element in that. You know, oh, it has to be pure. No, it's it's not pure. We don't want it. <laughs> they come. They have different ancestors. Mm. Well, no, it's. It's, it's, it's because of what they are and how they behave that I think they make good subjects. Did you ever play with uh, all my seeds? A little bit, yeah. 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 They're, they're, In fact, one I, summer they killed off uh, mil, uh, Azola. I, I played with them all one summer. They killed Azola within one day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, it was a... <laughs> uh, 
It was a uh, Pythium. Yeah, yeah.